Uh, greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, greetings, everybody. There's a big thing going on in church circles. The argument over election, or does God have a chosen people, or whosoever will. You know, who who makes the choice of, you know, uh, coming to Christ? Does the Lord pick us, or do we pick him? You know? And Pastor Dan Gaiman, one of the few pastors I have a ton of respect for, of course, he's getting up there in years, but uh, his stuff that he did back in the 90s, unbelievable, really good. Uh, he said, theology has implications, and you think about it. If the Bible teaches that a certain group of people are Israel, and God commanded Israel to be a separated and segregated people, then that means they were supposed to stay away from all the heathens. And if you believed in election, God making a choice, well, then you'd be separated from all the rest of the world. But if you believe in whosoever will, well, then it doesn't matter. Let's bring all the heathens to America and Europe. You know, let's bring them all here and we'll teach them about Jesus. And then they can say, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Well, even the devil believes in Jesus. James chapter 2, you know. But you got to realize something. The whosoever will crowd will ignore the entire Old Testament. They never quote from the Old Testament. Matter of fact, they say, oh, that's not even relevant anymore. And what they'll do is, quote, strictly the New Testament, totally ignoring the context when they say, whosoever will come to the Lord. And if you're interested in a detailed study on it, you know, write me a comment and I'll give you, I've done studies, detailed studies on election and whosoever will. I'm just doing kind of a overview. But the thing is, you got to realize, did the apostles pick Jesus? Or did Jesus pick the apostles? Well, Jesus picked the apostles and then the apostles decided to follow him. That's how it works. Even Jesus even said, uh, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? For he spoke of Judas Iscariot. Oh yeah. You know? So, if you believe, well, even the whosoever will crowd believes in an elect chosen people, but they believe that the Antichrists are the chosen people. And if you don't know what an Antichrist is, may I suggest you read 1 John chapter 2. Uh, I think it's around verse 22 gives you the definition of what an antichrist is. Somebody that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Yeah, they meet in a certain building and they're waiting their Messiah to come. And we know him as the antichrist or the man of sin. The son of perdition. The beast. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're waiting for the other guy. So, uh, 
But boy, try to tell that to uh, the church world. And uh, they're hoping you won't read your Bible because if you do read the Bible, you'll feel you'll figure out that what they're teaching uh, that they're full of well, you know what. Uh, and then when you start asking questions, they'll say, oh, this one. Oh, did you ever see the movie uh, They Live? And uh, I think he's in a liquor store or something. And he puts the glasses on and that old woman, he says, oh, well, you're ugly. And then she talks into her wristwatch or whatever and says, we got one here that can see. Oh, boy. Well, that's what the pastors are there for. Hey, we got one that's, uh, we got a live one here. And they'll kick you out because they don't want you to infect their other members, you know, their churchgoers. Yep, I have seen it so many times. Honestly, I think 90-something percent of all the pastors are a bunch of Satanists and devil worshipers. Uh, and at the very least, they're uh, just hirelings that have no business in the behind the pulpit. I. Uh, Either that or they're extremely brainwashed. I, You know, I don't know. How can you go to Bible college for four, six, eight years where you're supposed to have read the entire Bible and not know these things? I just can't figure it out. I mean, I'm not no super genius by no means. I'm an idiot in a lot of ways. But... Uh, one thing I am glad is my parents, uh, I was a very poor reader, I think it's second, third, or fourth grade, somewhere around there. And uh, mom or dad, or maybe both of them, I don't know, they went to school, PTA meeting, parents teacher meeting, and, and they said, uh, teacher said, oh, your son, he, he can't read worth a crap. And he says, well, what can we do to help him learn to read? Well, get him stuff that he'd like to read, you know? So they bought me comics. Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Flash. Uh, I wasn't a big Spider-Man guy. I was more DC Comics. And I started reading the comics in the newspapers. You know, Snoopy and whatever. Um... B.C., uh, what was it, Mort Walker, no relation that I know of, uh, Beetle Bailey, yeah, you know, practice makes perfect, I guess. But I got to be very, by the time I got to sixth grade, uh, when I was getting ready to, re well, move from sixth grade to seventh, they gave me a reading test. And they said, you're reading at uh, high school graduate college freshman level sixth grade yeah it's amazing but if you talk to me about math i'm an idiot <laughs> so, uh, but um you know the whosoever will crowd does believe in an elect or chosen people but like i say they they think that the antichrists uh are the chosen people and it just doesn't make any sense. So, how can be those that deny Jesus are the elect? Elect. And if you do believe that Christians are the elect, well, then they'll throw names out there at there at you. One thing I've learned: when they cannot call you a liar and prove it from the Bible. They'll call you names. And what's his name? Ooh, he's a Calvinist. Calvinist? I don't even... I've read almost nothing Calvin does, has written. I, I think I read a tiny little book booklet he did. I know very little about Calvin. I know he was involved 
with the Geneva Bible, and that's about all I know. You know, I don't follow Calvin, but Calvin believed in election. And I've had some people say that he was a, uh, a J. I don't know about that. From what I understand, the Geneva Bible was a pretty good translation. Uh, I don't know. I've had people say that Calvin was a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. I don't know about that. They said, oh, he had people murdered. Uh, well, you know what? From what I was reading, the person that uh, he had put to death was basically the modern-day Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you ask me, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they should be put to death. They should be. You know, they're they're Christ deniers. Let's see if they want to die for their faith. Uh, I doubt it. Especially since the Jehovah's Witnesses were uh, teaching that the world would, Christ would return and the world would end by 1975 or 76, I forget. But, uh, yeah. So, what these people will do they can't prove you wrong from the scriptures. They call you names. And what they'll try to do is apply scriptures that apply to the church and try to make them apply to everybody. So, hey, all those uh, illegals at the border, bring them on in. We'll teach them about Jesus. God loves everybody. Never mind that... Uh, the Bible says that God hated Esau. Oh, God hated Esau. Oh, that's Old Testament. Don't listen to that. Well, Paul quotes it in the New Testament. Oh, well, he's just quoting the Old Testament that doesn't apply anymore. Read Obadiah. Read Malachi. Uh, Esau and Edom. God rejected Esau. Yeah. God rejected Ishmael, too. You know? Let's take a look at that. In Hebrews 11, it's quoting Genesis, verse 17. It said, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, you know, tested, you know, uh, tried. You know, you like when you go to a trial, you're tried. You know, it's a test. Are they innocent or are they guilty? I mean, all you need to do is learn these King James Bible words and how to apply them. People say, oh, the King James, it's so hard to understand. No, it's not. No, it's not. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Well, he was going to sacrifice Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, his seed was to be called uh, in Isaac. In Genesis 17, 21, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee, at the set, set time in the next year. See, God himself was going to, uh, well, he didn't, it, it, it wasn't so much a rejection of Ishmael. He blessed Ishmael. Now, I've got an entire Bible study on that, if anybody's interested. But, uh, you know, Ishmael was not to be the chosen seed. Isaac was. Same thing with Esau. And here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16, 
lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Now, why is Esau called a fornicator? He had, he was married to two wives. Well, they were Canaanites. God says that uh, in that day there'd be no more of the Canaanite in the house of the Lord. What, Chaplain Bob? God, whosoever will, God wants to save the Canaanites now. Well, you could believe that if you want. But my Bible tells me they were satanic human hybrids. Yeah. That's a heresy, Chaplain Bob. Angels can't have sex. Uh, ask them to show you that. It says that uh, in the resurrection, there will be like the angels in heaven. Well, guess what? The Bible records the angels being kicked out of heaven. Well, that's the future. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That was 2,000 years ago. How can it be the future? Um... Yeah. Esau should never have married the Canaanites. Never. That's why he's called a fornicator. He was married to them. Fornication is married uh, being uh, sex with an unmarried people. Adultery is when one or both the parties are legally binding married, marriage. Legally as in God's eyes, not the state. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Who, found, who rejected Esau? God did. Oh, but, 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 but Esau, he, whosoever will, all he's got to do is say, I believe in Jesus. Uh, I don't think so. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Crocodile, crocodile tears. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He was bad news bears, people. Bad news bears. You know, people don't realize... God makes the choice. And then we have a choice. Will we follow God's calling or not? See, they can't, the whosoever will crowd, they can't handle the kind of stuff that I read there. And then even if they, if you do uh, get them to acknowledge, well, God rejected Esau, but his children can come to the Lord. Uh, no, they can't. The Bible says that Amalek was a grandson of Esau. God said he was going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. What does that sound like? Forever to me. So, you see, the whosoever will crowd will ignore everything that proves them wrong. And then they call that... Uh, uh, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, the theological implications of whosoever will means that you can have all the heathen aliens flood the land and the churches will never speak against it. Because after all, the heathen aliens, they can become Christians. All they got to do is believe in Jesus. 
But the Bible teaches separation and segregation from the heathens. If people knew, if the, the Christians knew that they were God's elect, they would know to stay away from the heathens and not allow them into the country. But this is something the so-called churches hide from the flock. They want us to believe that the devil's children are God's elect. You know, the, the crowd that John the Baptist said that they were a race of vipers, O ye generation of serpents, uh, who Jesus said that they were the children of the devil. Yeah, they want you to think that those are God's elect. Those are God's chosen. Right. Maybe the lake of fire. Uh, not salvation. Read John chapter 8 sometime. So when the time comes, when persecution comes to a certain race of people some will wake up to who they really are after all it is going to be the time of jacob's trouble jacob's name was changed to israel and the church has misidentified who is jacob israel your western churches have touched the pre-trib rapture and not persecution so when people figure out who it is being persecuted and who it is that is doing the persecution, the entire lying church's narrative will fall apart. All that the wolves in the pulpit have taught. I'm just wondering how many are going to lose their lukewarm faith when they find out that they have a choice that they must either deny Jesus or die for Jesus. Some are going to wake up and figure out that they were lied to, I suppose. But I'm of the opinion that most are going to end up denying Jesus to save their miserable earthly existence. After all, it's just a microchip, you know? And I got to have it to feed my family. Uh, you know, I can't go to the grocery. I can't have a job without it. You know, and God would, definitely wants me to feed my children. That'll, I've heard that. I've heard that from people. You, you don't have faith that God could feed you and your family? There's only two things in this life God promises. Food and clothing. That's the only two things. Paul said if you have food and raiment, clothing, be content. Duh, you know. But if I don't have a microchip, I can't go to the grocery. Well, I guess God's unable to feed you, huh? But I like my steak. Well, I like steak too, but, you know, while I was going to college, not Bible college, regular college, I used to have to work two jobs. I worked 40 hours to pay for my bills, and then I worked uh, two days a week at the other job, part-time, on the weekends, so that I could um, pay for my college, because I didn't make enough money on my regular job to pay for college. Guess what I ate? Not steak. That's for blasted sure. I used to watch these big, fat black women with a grocery cart full of food. I mean, steaks and everything. And pull out their, their food stamps. And I used to shake my head going, I haven't eaten that much steak in over a year. And... They, they didn't pay for any of it. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that white privilege. You better believe it. So, 
you know, if they end up denying Christ to save their lives or physical flesh, Jesus in turn will deny them before the Father and his angels, and that is a promise in the scriptures. And nothing, and I mean nothing, is more repugnant to the so-called churches than identifying who the enemies of Christ are and who are the sheep of God's pasture. That is absolutely repugnant to them. I would like to think that I've reached some people and given the glory to Christ. So that is why they teach whosoever will and try to make us think that anybody can become one of God's sheep. Jesus taught that there was wheat and he taught that there were tares or weeds. You know, wheat produces wheat and bear, uh, weeds produce weeds. And that there, Jesus also taught that there were sheep and that there were goats. Well, guess what? Goats are born goats. And sheep are born sheep. I know, it's pretty obvious, but some people just don't understand that. A sheep may act like a goat, but it's still a sheep. And a goat may act like a sheep, but it is still a goat. And I find it uh, a coincidence how that Satanists pick a goat for their symbol. How interesting is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, election or whosoever will. You know, wrong theology has theological implications. And basically everything the church world is teaching today is garbage. Garbage. And if I didn't have Christ, I'd be insane. The way things are today. But I know this must come to pass. So, alrighty, well, now you know why they teach whosoever will you know God made his covenant with Abraham and then confirmed it with Isaac and then confirmed it with Jacob who he changed his name to Israel and then with his uh, 13 sons well 12 but Joseph had two sons and he confirmed it with both of them so basically yeah there's 12 tribes but yeah God didn't make his covenant with the whole world. He didn't do that. And I'll tell you what, I sure wouldn't want to be born a, of the tribe of uh, Esau, Edom. But the you-know-whos teach that Christians are Esau, Edom. Believe it or not, they do. So, all right, people. Um, take care. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.